This video is for educational purposes only. The case you're about to see involves a traumatic injury to the posterior tibial tendon, which occurred roughly three months ago. Preoperatively, this patient had radiographic and MRI imaging to assist the doctor in making a diagnosis. Conservative treatment included cast immobilization for three weeks and physical therapy, which had failed to give the patient relief. For this procedure, the patient is placed in the supine position. A thigh tourniquet is applied to assist with hemostasis. Local anesthetic is often used to augment general sedation. The foot is prepped and draped in the usual sterile manner using aseptic technique. The leg is elevated for three minutes and the thigh tourniquet inflated. Landmarks, including the medial malleolus and navicular tuberosity, are marked off and the posterior tibial tendon is outlined. The incision is made along the course of the posterior tibial tendon and deepened to the deep fascia which is sharply dissected and reflected. A sharp incision is made over the periosteum along the dorsal medial navicular so as to preserve as much of the posterior tibial attachment plantarly as possible. The periosteum is sharply dissected and the navicular tuberosity exposed. Blunt and sharp dissection is used to free up the accessory navicular and this can be confirmed using intraoperative fluoroscopy. An osteotum and mallet is often used so that the surgeon can better appreciate the depth and amount of bone being removed. The navicular edges can be fashioned more easily using the osteotome and mallet technique. Once the hypertrophied navicular tuberosity has been resected flush, the accessory navicular can be clamped and excised. The area is irrigated to remove any small remaining bone fragments and confirmed with intraoperative fluoroscopy. Any hypertrophied synovium can be excised. The posterior aspect of the navicular, where the accessory navicular articulates, is rasped. Suture anchors are often used at this point for reattachment of the posterior tibial tendon or to reinforce the repair. In this case, two striker iconic suture anchors were used for tenodesis and repair purposes. The first anchor is inserted posteriorly on the navicular and the second anchor plantar medial on the navicular for two points of attachment. A free needle is used to pass the fiber suture through the posterior tibial tendon, which is tied down firmly on the navicular to allow for tenodesis. According to the striker manufacturer, the pull-out strength of this type of suture anchor is roughly 100 pounds. Once the tendon repair has been completed, the deep structures, including periosteum and synovium, are enclosed over the tendon as one layer. This reinforces the repair. Superficial fascia is closed with three ovicral sutures.
skin is closed with interrupted nylon sutures. The dressing includes a betadine soaked gauze, 4x4s, a Curlix dressing, and a Coban bandage. A short, like fiberglass cast is applied, which will remain intact for three weeks. In three weeks, the cast will be removed, and I expect to see the patient with minimal swelling and no signs of any infection. The patient will then be allowed to begin range of motion exercises without resistance at home, passive range of motion, and then within two weeks, we'll begin weight-bearing to tolerance.